27, defender Shea Smith. Number 20, midfielder Gabi Gonzalez. Number 13, midfielder Rashad Mometi. Number 7, midfielder Alan Russell. Number 8, forward Juan Perez. Number 67, forward Mikel Galindo. Number 9, forward Chris Cortez. Coach of the LA Blues is Darius Yazdani. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with our national anthem sung by Juanita Aranta. Okay, can I move this a little forward so I can get up to the ramp? USL Nation and Liquid Event TV welcomes you to this presentation of USL Pro Soccer, where tonight, the final match of the 2013 USL Pro season between the Los Angeles Blues and the Rochester Rhinos. Los Angeles comes into the game with a record of 10, 8, and 7, and they can finish as low as 8th in the table or as high as 6. But the good news for the Blues is that they're already in the playoffs, but obviously want to get the three points here tonight because they want to get the highest seating possible and avoid the likes of Richmond and Orlando at the top of the table. For the Rochester Ninos, coming in at 6, 9, and 10, the first time in their 18-year history that they will miss out on the postseason. But the good news is that they're trying to end their season with a three-game winning streak as they won last night in Phoenix in stoppage time, a 4-3 win after Tam McManus scored for the second straight game after the 90th minute mark to give the Rhinos all three points against the Phoenix FC Wolves. So for the Rochester Rhinos, a chance to finish this season on a high. And Rochester, of course, one of the class teams in the USL Pro. The only team to win the US Open Cup in the lower divisions since the inception of the MLS teams in 1996. That came in 1999. The Rochester Rhinos, six-time finalists and three times champions in the USL. 
And for the Rhinos, if it wasn't tough enough playing two, ga two games in two days on the road, they had trouble getting to LA. First, their flight this morning was delayed. Then it got canceled, and they showed up about an hour before game time, totally out of their control, but such is life in the USL Pro. So it's going to be an interesting outing for this Rochester Rhinos side, but you know that they will come out fired up as there is so much talent for this team despite the fact that it's been such a frustrating season. So much of it has to do with the fact that last night was just their second win on the road. Two, six, and three away, well, only four, three, and seven at home. And will they say in the USL Pro that you have to win your games at home and then at least split or do semi-well on the road? Last year, the LA Blues missing the playoffs going four, six, and two at home. This time around, they come into tonight's final match. Seven, three, and three in Los Angeles with 27 of their 50 goals scored here at home and just 11 goals conceded. Six of their seven clean sheets have come in Southern California as well. Now speaking of a team that's able to keep a clean sheet, the Rochester Rhinos have 10 this season in all competitions. However, the problem is that five of them have been 0-0 draws, but Christian Nisch, who is in goal, the 31-year-old German, has eight clean sheets. That's good enough for second in the USL Pros. We're all set for kickoff here at Titan Stadium on the campus of Cal State Fullerton, and it's the LA Blues in all blue to get us underway, and they are going from left to right across your screen. The Rochester Rhinos in their traditional away jerseys, green and yellow stripes all the way down with green socks, and they are going from right to left. This will be a foul right away. And a free kick for this LA Blues squad to be played by Corey Miller. O'Leary wanted it. Miller is going to take it instead. The LA Blues just 26 goals last year, already 50, and a chance for one here, but it skips all the way through to Christian Nish. German joining last year from Karlsruhe in the Bundesliga 2. Has also played in the top division in Germany in the Bundesliga with Aleman Aachen in the same league with the likes of Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. This is the Rochester Rhinos trying to pass their way through the melee in midfield. And they'll press the reset button as they get it back to Duckett. 24-year-old on loan from the New England Revolution. Spent last season in the USL Pro with the Harrisburg City Islanders. A bit of a heavy touch from Pola. The rookie able to get back, but is turned by Galindo. Galindo looking for space, tried to clip it inside for Mershad Momaini. And the Cuban is stripped of the ball. And Rochester forging forward here, but it's two against seven. That's a good ball into the space. It's been a tough season for the Rhinos all the way around. Started the season 0-6, but their first five games were away from Silent Stadium, where they usually average over 5,000 per game. So that's a good ball in looking for the lone striker. And O'Leary muscles him off the ball. Earls will leave this one off. Little touch for him from Duckett. Earl's voted by Rochester as their 2013 MVP. Former Colorado Rapid man in his second stint with the club after four years growing up in the Aston Villa Reserves. Chris Cortez, one more goal and he'll be on double digits for the season for the LA Blues. Question as to whether or not that should have been a corner kick, but instead it's just gonna be a goal kick for the Rochester Rhinos in the third minute. Still no score here at Titan Stadium. Mark Serber with you here on USL Nation, courtesy of Liquid Event TV. We'd like to welcome all of you joining in in Rochester. I know it's late over in upstate New York. Rochester, a place very near and dear to my heart as I went to school just a few hours down the road in Syracuse, so I hope you're listening in and also having a garbage plate. Chris Cortez trying to dance his way out of traffic. And Earls will get it back to Duckett. Good pressure from Momaney, but Duckett able to step in front of it. And the Blues doing a good job of defending from the front. 
That's a great outlet ball though to relieve some of the pressure. Rosenlund. 26 year old was the first ever Canadian to score for Toronto FC back in 2008. Also has one cap for the Canucks to his name. It's the long ball looking forward. And it might be on here for Rochester. Dutch Jock trying to get back. Good recovery. The question is, was the forward bundled over? Was under some duress, but the referee says play on. Good recovery from Dutch Jock, although the Blues cannot allow Rochester to get behind him like that. Russell. And now it's the Blues looking to go over the top for Cortez. And Nish quickly off his line. Galindo will leave the throne off for Corey Miller. Cortez. Momaney. The Blues will look to recycle their runs. O'Leary, 25-year-old Scotsman joining after 10 years in the Scottish Premier League. Russell, the orchestrator in midfield looking for Cortez once again. Beautifully bought down. A good ball in the channel, just a bit too much pace as it was looking for Perez on the far side. You could see the idea there from the LA Blues, and it all almost came off well. You'd like to welcome Angel Six minute in, and still no score here Angel between the LA Blues and the Rochester Rhinos. These two teams played to a 2 2 draw back in Rochester on May 31st. For the LA Blues, who've given up a lot of late goals this season, they gave up an 88th minute equalizer in that match, so the Rhinos able to steal two points from the LA Blues and share the spoils. Fans, be sure to stop by the Blues merchandise booth to purchase your tickets for a chance to win the Rosalind Blues wins it in midfield. Earls. Tonight, during halftime, we'll draw Polak. A nice little move to Ludus defender. Polak gets the byline. That has to be a handball. Oh, what is the referee doing? Weighing, waving play on here. That was a definite handball, and the LA Blues escape. Galindo looking to run. Good cover from Duckett. Oh, plenty of arguments for the center referee, Alejandro Mariscal, and I think Rochester has a case. And out the other end, it's a chance for a long throw in. Corey Miller deciding whether or not he wants to play it short. Mid-range to Momaney. And Hoxie wins the throw in for Rochester. 26-year-old Hoxie was the leading scorer for the Rhinos in 2011. Just two goals and one assist, making his 13th appearance this season. This is Hoxie. Little touch on for Polak. Rookie out of Creighton gets it back, and this is Rosenlund. Inside for Banks. And O'Leary with a bit of a heavy touch, and that is a free kick at the top of the box. This time, Mariscal gets it right. Aaron Perez getting the start tonight for the LA Blues in goal, screaming for a five-man wall. Perez, a former punter in the NFL. Played with the New England Patriots and the Miami Dolphins out of UCLA. Banks standing over the ball along with Earls. It would be Earls on the left, or Banks on the right. Oh, 
Uh, it's a good ball in, but it's over the crossbar, so nothing to concern Aaron Perez in the end. As once again, the Blues get away with one in the ninth minute. It remains 0-0. Shea Spitz wins the header. Rather puts it right down. A bit of a push, but play goes on as Rochester has the ball. And safety first from the LA Blues, just ushering it out of bounds. Cortez. Had a goal and assist the last time these two teams met in upstate New York. Brett Schneider, who's on the bench tonight for the Rochester Rhinos, had a goal and assist in that game as well. Earls. Rosenland. Rosenland will look to be the link between defense and midfield for the Rochester Rhinos this evening. And Earl's always so dangerous, whether he's going down the line or cutting inside. That one's skipping just above his head. But a chance for the Rochester Rhinos to lock in here in the 11th minute. Oh, and a heavy challenge. Samir Shad Momini goes to ground. And the first yellow card of the game will be administered to Danny Earls. Oh, so Earls is saying if I'm going to get a yellow card, then O'Leary has to get a yellow card because it was the same kind of challenge right at the top of the box just moments ago. So the yellow card given in the 11th minute. Corey Miller waiting for the whistle of Mari Skull. Now to pump it into the mix. That's not a bad fall. Falls kindly for Perez. He's taken out wide just a bit. But not the best of crosses in the end, but Cortez able to get a flick on it. And a lack of urgency from the LA Blues to get on that second ball. The flick on deserved better. But Rochester able to clear their lines. Going forward once again, two on five. He's still able to keep possession. Now more green and yellow jerseys venture into the attack. And good work from Hoxie to keep it for the Rochester Rhinos in the 13th minute. Good pressure from the LA Blues, not inviting that entry ball from the Rochester Rhinos back line. It's tiring work, but can make it so much easier for the rest of your team when you defend from the front as a forward. And a missed touch there, almost a chance for a break, and perhaps a bit of a makeup call, because that was a handball as well. Not a bad little touch on, but well defended from O'Leary. Playing his fifth game tonight for the LA Blues since coming over from Kilmarnock. Russell with acres of space. Over for Spitz on the far side. Spitz, such a versatile player, has played along all three lines for the LA Blues this season. Pollock, 21-year-old on loan from the New England Revolution. Still looking for his first points of the season in his 18th game for the club.
as both teams have had good sustained periods of possession, but what can they do with it? Corey Miller, well stationed. Cortez looking to get on the end of that flick on from Gabriel Gonzalez, but Rochester able to clear their lines. Oh, what a touch to bring it down from Danny Earls. I spoke about the Aston Villa Reserves. Huge win for them today over Arsenal. That's the LA Blues, Shea Spitz. Electric in full flight. Was able to weave his way down the line. Put the ball inside looking for Cortez cut out. And Earl's just looking to keep the ball in the 15th minute of this scoreless encounter between the Blues and the Rhinos. The LA Blues have never beaten the Rochester Rhinos. These two teams did not play in 2011. But Rochester went 3-0 against them last year including two wins in the first two games of the season for both teams right here at Titan Stadium. Russell pulls out of the challenge. Hoxie has it stabbed away from O'Leary but able to keep possession. Still some space to work here for the Rochester Rhinos. Polak. Galindo did a good job to step in and win that ball. However, nobody get on the end of the clearance. The referee's assistant on his far side had the flag up. So either offside or a foul. Not sure which one it is. Either way, it'll be a free kick and a get out of jail free card for the LA Blues. So Aaron Perez will come all the way out to take this one in the 16th minute. Rochester looking for just their third win on the road this season. Also looking to end the season with three straight wins. Tonight here at Titan Stadium is Armed Forces Appreciation Night. We'd like to thank all of you around the world who serve this wonderful country. Thank you for everything you give so that we can live freely and in peace. This time it was J.C. Banks who was cut out by a slew of blue jerseys. This one all the way through to Niche. Easy pickings for the German. Also spent a season in the Norwegian Premiership with Viking FK. Mayer, Rosenland, Perez Bernal, that was a heavy challenge, and that's got to be a yellow card, if not a red. Couldn't tell the severity of it from this side, but it is just a yellow card. You could tell what the Rochester bench thought of it. They all jumped up in unison. Fourth official was right there as well. You have to wonder if these tackles are flying in in the 65th or 70th minute, would the cards be a different color? But already two players in Alejandro Mariscal's book. And we're just 18 minutes in. So stoppage of play here in the 18th minute after a heavy challenge from Juan Perez Bernal. Still no score between the two sides, although the Rochester Rhinos had shouts for a penalty turned down. Looked to be a legit handball in the box, but the center referee, Marik Skal, waved it off. Rochester also had a free kick from about 20 yards out, but with Tam McManus not on the field, nobody able to recreate the magic that he did in the 93rd minute of that one nothing win against the Pittsburgh Riverhounds in the last home match for the Rochester Rhinos is a chance on here. Deserve much better from that position. You, need to check a match you have to believe that McManus will feature off the bench later on. Or catch up on the 
three goals in his last two games, including a brace last night against Phoenix, and two game winners in stoppage time as well. A good job to try and keep that in. To get away from trouble as well. That's a good forging run here, but that ball looking for the target man cut out. Rochester able to get it there at the second attempt. Now Dutch Jock with some defending to do. Jock finally able to get on the right side. Gives up a little bit of space. Banks has it poked away. So Rochester Rhino still unable to pierce the armor around the top of the LA Blues box. And now it's Cortez running one against two. Duck it with some good one-on-one -on -one defending. Miller. Russell just looking to control the shape of the game in the 20th minute. Really no chances for the LA Blues side yet. Rochester has created a few half chances. This one will be launched into the box. Looks for the flick on from Cortez. Cortez racing to get there before Mayard. Shea Spitz, oh, heavy touch from Galindo, shouts for a handball there, and the referee waves play on once again. Well, if you're the LA Blues, you have a valid argument, but you can't complain, it's now one to one. This game might as well be one to one from the spot. Earls, Polak. Trying to get that half yard of space from Galindo. Beautiful entry ball in for Rosenlund. And it was a good tackle from Gabriel Gonzalez, but at the expense of a corner. And it's the first of the game for the Rochester Rhinos. Quickly taken into the box. And it's Gonzalez out to defend once again. Second quarter in quick succession. And they play it short once again. What are the Blues doing? Need to wake up here. And the diving header, and Perez with a tremendous save. And he has every right to be frustrated with his defense. Uh, if you could hear him yell, Galindo, you listen to me, you get there where that short ball is. So now Earls is going to have to play it into the box. It's going to be an outswinger from the near side. Rochester winning that first ball once again, but headed in the wrong direction. This long ball looking for, well, rather splitting Momani and Perez Bernal. Rashad Momani chasing over to pressure on this near side. 25 year old Iranian is looking for his first goal in USL Pro play since April 26th. When he struck one at this end from about 25 yards against Wilmington in what was a 4 0 hammering of the hammerheads, you might say. Terrible alliteration there, I beg your pardon. But once again, the LA Blues just looking to settle things down in the 23rd minute. Rochester with the best chance of the game, a diving header, but Perez with a spectacular one-handed save, pushing it around the post. And this might be on here for Cortez. Niche is there first. And a foul will be called on Cortez. Cortez with nine goals and three assists on the season. Came into tonight second on the league in shots with 64. Only Jose Angulo of Pittsburgh has more with 67. Duckett chases down the loose ball. Uses the safety valve and niche.
O'Leary wins the first header, but Rochester win the second and third. That's where the LA Blues have to close it down in midfield. Galindo a bit too slow, pinching inside there. And it allows Rochester to try and forge their way down the far side. Getting to the byline once again. Oh, and Dutch Jock was well positioned. He let it run through. Still a chance could be on here for Banks, and it's going to be the fourth corner kick for the Rochester Rhinos. It's the LA Blues defense getting careless. So it'll be Danny Earls to serve it in once again. It's going to require a good ball from the former Colorado Rapids man. And it was good, but Cortez able to get his head on it. And Gonzalez with the clearance. Space for Shea Spitz on the break. Galindo. Romani stayed on side, but that passed just a bit off kilter. It'll be a throw in for the Rhinos in the 25th minute. Still scoreless here at Titan Stadium. That thanks to the referee Alejandro Mariscal, who's let two legit calls for handballs in the box go, one for each team, and Aaron Perez with a tremendous save to keep the Rochester Rhinos off the board. It was a diving header from point blank range and quick reactions at full stretch from Aaron Perez. Looked to be over the top from Miller, but he wins the ball over J.C. Banks. Oh, and just a nice little feint from Rosalind to push or to put, rather, Perez Bernal off. And Rochester will keep possession. Good job by Pollock to step into that space in front of Allen Russell, but the Blues win it back. Once again, carelessly given away in midfield. Banks waiting for the overlap from Earls. Has the inside option. Earls once again, rather played it behind Banks. Able to rescue the situation. Now put it in. It's a good ball across the ground. And O'Leary making absolutely sure, just clearing it to safety. Fifth corner kick of the game for the, char uh, for the Rochester Rhinos. Beg your pardon. All of them coming from this left-hand side. Danny Earls to play it long. Needs to get over the head of the first defender. It does. Rochester with a chance to reload. Rosenland sends it in. Oh, volley at the top of the box. Always skewing wide of goal. Looked like Banks had time to settle that and then take a hit. And we went for the spectacular, and in the end, well wide of goal. The LA Blues can breathe another sigh of relief as plenty of questions have been asked of this defense from the Rochester Rhinos. We remain scoreless, though, in the 28th minute. Four goals shared between these two teams the last time they met in Rochester. Had to wait till the 40th minute for the opener in that game, though. Rosenland trying to chip it over for Mayer. Canadian connection working out in the end. As the 25-year-old weaves his way into the box. Oh, and that's a dangerous place to leave your feet. Absolutely have to get the ball, and the LA defender did. And once again, the LA Blues inviting Rochester to run at the gaps. Put over the top, but not on the same page. Good keeping from Perez, despite the fact that this is just his fourth game. The header back with enough power to reach Niche before Cortez could get to it. Any lack of pace on that ball, and it would have been a real awkward situation for Niche. Rochester showing their ability, so adept at keeping the ball. Go. 
Earls cutting inside once again. Rosalind runs into a bit of trouble and play goes on despite the fact that two LA Blues players are down. Dutch Jock well positioned and Galindo jumping over Cortez to win that ball. Jock smartly back to his keeper. The LA Blues playing with three center backs tonight, and Dutch Jock, Ryan O'Leary, and Corey Miller. Blues missing their maestro in midfield as Rodrigo Lopez injured his foot in the two to one win over Charleston. And Matt Fondi getting a rest on the bench, expect to see him later. Jimmy Turner and Matt Hall also left out of the side for tonight. You never know who's going to be in the game day 18 for Darius Yazdani. Likes to switch it around depending on the opponent he's playing and what he sees in them. Watches a lot of film and decides which are the best 11 for that game, not which is his best 11 for every single game. It changes game to game depending on the tendencies of the opponent. Corey Miller steps in. Good job by Pollock to hassle into Harry. But in the end, the Blues able to pass their way out of it. Still need to work their way forward, though, the Blues on the half hour mark. Still 0 0 between the Blues and the Rhinos. That's a good tackle from Chris Cortez, but a handball. Oh, and Juan Perez Bernal. Oh, looks like the referee was going to go to his book, but he didn't. And I think it's because Juan Perez Bernal already has a yellow card. And the ref wasn't going to send him off for something as small as that. Interesting for Alejandro Mariscal. It looked to me like he was about to go to his book and then decided not to. The Blues may very well escape there. And Perez Bernal on a yellow card for that tackle on the far side, though, has to be careful. Can't do anything stupid like that. I've seen yellow cards given for less. Talk about other Blues players missing. Elise Garcia and Charles Petty's both injured in the game against Charleston. And in fact, in that game, Darius Yazdani, due to those injuries, had to use four different right backs. The first two because of the injuries, the second two to deal with the speed of Quinton Griffith. But as Cortez creates space for himself, but pulls his shot wide. Once again, there's only a few more minutes left first real you. chance of any significance for the LA Blues and a half chance at best coming in the 33rd minute off the boot of Chris Cortez. He's tied for joint leading score on the team with Matthew Fondi. He's taking his time on the goal kick in the 33rd minute here on USL Nation via Liquid Events TV. Want to say hello while I have a chance to Evan Mundine listening in. Hope you're doing well, Evan. So Nish will take his time. Long ball looking for Mayard over the top. Corey Miller on this near side has kept him on. And the Blues have to make their recovery runs. Space for Pollock to go one on one. Earls joins the party. That's a good ball in. Still might fall kindly in the back post. This is a chance could be on here for Rochester. Another service in, and this time the flag is up. Even though Mayard had Perez look, looking very worried. The referee's assistant flag saves the Blues in the end. Did a good job to step up. As Myard went just a second too early.
Galindo has now switched flanks with Perez Bernal, wins the ball on the far side. Almost run into the wall, but it's off of him last. Duckett put under a bit of pressure. Miller wins the header. Such a boss in the air, Corey Miller. And a rare heavy touch from Danny Earls. And we talked about the absentees for the LA Blues. How about the fact that Troy Roberts, who's just been named the defender of the year for the Rochester Rhinos for the fourth consecutive season, he's not on this trip. Nish has to clear. Not his best, but it will work out in the end as it'll just be a goal kick. USLNation.com is the league's official online video channel and features exclusive behind-the-scenes content, interviews, games, and more. Visit USLNation.com to see our guy footage of tonight's match. Spits up for the header. Russell brings it down. And plays it behind Bernal. So the Blues have really yet to find their radar in terms of passing, and we're already 36 minutes in. Duck it. Hernandez on the far side. One back by Shea Spitz. Pollock has his pocket picked by Corey Miller, but it will go out for a throw in. Rosenlund. Oh, well, it's a heavy challenge. Russell saying he got the ball first, but, but he did get a lot of banks as well. So it'll be a free kick for the Rochester Rhinos and a chance to put this one in the melting pot. Earls was thinking of swinging it in. Kyriasis wanted him to do something different. Uh, service needed to be better. A bit flat on this occasion from Danny Earls. Still no score in the 38th minute. Thrown for the LA Blues. Spitz trying to step in. Mayer takes the ball off him. And that one looking for Tanky on the far side goes out of bounds. And thrown from what looks like the exact same spot. Shea Spitz creeping up about 10 yards from where the ball actually went out of bounds, looking long for Cortez. Galindo wins it back. Nish will let this one roll into his box. And when you've played less than 24 hours ago in a 4-3 thriller, why not take your time and settle things down a bit? Good win. Momaney able to shield off his defender. Has space to run Momaney, and the offside flag is up. Good idea, though, from Irshad Momaney, and a good diagonal run from Chris Cortez. Just needs to hold it a bit longer. That's what the Blues need more of here in the 39th minute. Really no offense to speak of for the home side. 
This is a team with 15 goals, 50 goals this season rather, 14 different goal scorers. Had just 26 goals last year. Uh, so far, Rochester has kept them at bay as they're looking for their 11th clean sheet of the season in all competitions. Foul held on Rhino, number 21. Hoxie called for the foul. Corey Miller will give it off to O'Leary. O'Leary, professional in the Scottish Premier League since the age of 16. Cortez, unable to get by Duckett. Pollock, has just one player in front of him, has to go square. Earls. Oh, when it's not on Rochester, do a good job of pulling it back and having more players join the attack. Would just like to see them get forward a little bit quicker and maybe join in on some of these counters. But like I said, they played last night. The legs have to be heavy. And beautiful combination play, but just a bit too much pace on the final ball. And it goes all the way through to Aaron Perez, who's really been the hero for the LA Blues. One big save to keep out a diving header that looked destined for the goal early on from Aaron Perez. Cortez has support in the guise of Bernal. Little pullback. Miller thinking about the early service, but closed down well by Pollock. And Russell so adept at just keeping possession. Rashad Momaney trying to get the return ball to Spitz on the far side. Kyriasis. What a bad mistouch in midfield. Gives the ball back to the Blues. However, they return the favor. Inside the final three and a half minutes of the first half of the final game in the entire 2013 USL Pro regular season. The long ball and offside. Good job by this LA Blues line to step up once again. So they did a great job against Charleston. Had Charleston's forward, Dane Kelly, offside six different times. But this is an LA Blue side that has had a habit of conceding goals late. In fact, they've given up goals in the last 10 minutes in three of their last four games. And we saw it against Rochester when they gave up the 88th minute equalizer. Also had losses here. Two of their three losses came on goals given up in the last five minutes against the Richmond Kickers, as well as the Dayton Dutch Lions. And if it weren't for these late goals that the Blues have conceded throughout the season, they could very well be in the top four. Go back to the 3-3 draw against Charlotte in which they gave up a goal off a corner kick in the 93rd minute as well. Russell, Gonzalez. Good turn from Galindo. Former Cuban international just looking to keep the ball and gets it to Momani. Oh, not a bad idea. Trying to split the defender and outside back and play through for Juan Perez Bernal, but well positioned was the Rochester back line right along the top of the penalty area. Final two and a half minutes of first half normal time. Meyer, Canadian. Ball lacking the necessary pace to reach its target. 
Nobody stretching the field though for the LA Blues. Nothing down the center. Two players out wide on each side forward. But instead the Blues have to go all the way back with it. O'Leary now. Corey Miller. Perez Bernal. Here and there'll be one minute of stoppage time. This Dutch jock gets there ahead of Hoxie. Great pressure from Hoxie though. Forcing Dutch Jock to stab it out, and it's going to be another corner kick for the Rochester Rhinos. Six corners to LA Blues, zero. And the Rhinos have looked dangerous off the set pieces. Well, when the LA Blues stick with their mark, they're usually so dominant in the air especially in their own box, but Rochester have given them some trouble here in this first half on these set pieces. It's another good service in from Earls. And it's another corner kick for Earls. Well, in fact, it's just gonna be a goal kick. Not sure about that one from my vantage point. As we are now in the first half stoppage time. Perez smashes it forward. Spitz. Galindo. Not even given a chance to turn on the far side. Rochester doing a very good job to close down the space in midfield. Russell. Miller. Russell once again wants to play that long ball over the top. Galindo. Gets it inside for Gonzalez, right back out to him. And this is better from the Blues. Deep into stoppage time, and the Blues with their best combination of the half to the far post. Perez Bernal brings it down on the chest, puts it to the far post. Nish gets a touch. Oh, from that angle, you think he might have done better to put it back across goal. The Blues wait until first half stoppage time to wake up. But if they can continue that way in the second half, then they'll be in fine kilter going forward. But for now, it's 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. Shouts for penalties off what looked like blatant handballs at both ends. And then a diving header opportunity point blank for the Rochester Rhinos was spectacularly saved by Aaron Perez. And at halftime, we stand LA Blue 0, Rochester Rhino 0. We're going to take a break here up in the booth, but when we come back for the second half, We'll give you the playoff picture as well as all the second half action in the final 45 minutes of the 2013 USL Pro regular season. At halftime, it's the LA Blue Zero and the Rochester Rhino Zero.
already for the final 45 minutes of the 2013 USL Pro regular season. 0-0 between the LA Blues and the Rochester Rhinos. The Rhinos were the better team in the first half, created more chances, but the LA Blues came to life in stoppage time. We'll let you know substitutions as they come. I can tell you that Matt Fondy has checked into the game. Nine goals in nine games for the LA Blues since re-signing with the club mid-season. So will be Rochester to kick off. And as they get set to kick off, we can tell you that the Richmond Kickers won the regular league title, finishing in first place. Orlando in second, Charleston in third. Harrisburg City, despite their loss, finish in fourth. Charlotte in fifth. Now here's where it gets interesting. The Pittsburgh River Hounds in sixth on 38, and the Dayton Dutch Lions tied with the LA Blues on 37. So if the LA Blues can win tonight, they would surpass the Pittsburgh River Hounds, which means that they would travel to Charleston to play the battery at Blackbird Stadium, a team that they split the season series with 1-1, both teams winning at home. However, if the LA Blues lose, then it'll be interesting to see whether they finish in seventh or eighth, where they would either play Orlando or the Richmond Kickers. And I think even though they're not the regular season champions, everybody wants to avoid Orlando playing in that cauldron. Very, very tough place to play. And the Richmond Kickers for the LA Blues, this is a team that they tied one to one in Richmond, and they had plenty of chances to win that game. And then against the Richmond Kickers here at Titan Stadium, they were leading one nothing, gave up a goal midway through the second half, and then gave up a penalty in the 85th minute off of what was a very suspect handball off of Elise Garcia. So they could have finished with two ties against the, the Richmond kickers. So I don't think that even if they finish the eighth seed, that would be the worst draw, worst draw for them. Of course, the players want all three points tonight, want to finish in sixth place as high as they possibly can and go to Charleston and get the job done there in the quarterfinals. So the first four are sorted out. Richmond, Orlando, Charleston, and Harrisburg will all host the Charlotte Eagles losing tonight, losing out on a chance to possibly host as they finish in fifth place. And six through eight all depend on this game here tonight, the final 45 minutes between the LA Blues and the Rochester Rhinos. As we look at the other scores from tonight, the Richmond kickers time Pittsburgh 1-1, one, one, and that's what allows the LA Blues to possibly move up to sixth place. Harrisburg City Islanders losing to the Dayton Dutch Lions, so they cement their first trip to the postseason. And then the Charlotte Eagles losing to Orlando one to nothing. Shea Spitz with the volley well wide of Nisha's goal. And the Wilmington Hammerheads cementing Antigua Barracuda's frustrating season with a four to one win. So Antigua finishes the season winless. Did not pick up a single point this year, Antigua Barracuda, although Spare thought for them played every single game on the road. Sandisha's long ball in the 48th minute of a scoreless draw between these two teams. LA Blues looking for their first ever win in their history over the Rochester Rhinos who beat them here 1-0 and 2-0 last year on a Friday-Sunday doubleheader. Rochester leading the all-time series 3-0-1 as Fondy the substitute is offside. So the LA Blues can finish anywhere between 8th, 7th, and 6th. Either way, they're in the playoffs, and the Rochester Rhinos out of the playoffs for the first time in their 18-year history. Sneesh taking his time on this goal kick. Has J.C. Banks creeping in on this near side, and that's who he looks for. Beautiful distribution, and the header to match from Banks to the top of the box. Tanky trying to turn and fire it. Rather plays it over to Corey Miller, clears it out. Blues looking to hit on the counter, but rather popped up in the air from Gonzalez looking for Fondi. Able to get it back to Gonzalez. Into the channel for Cortez. Pushes it out wide for Galindo in full flight. That's a good ball in. The header from Spitz. one nothing LA Blues in the 50th minute. It's the counter attack, work to perfection. And Spitz with his fourth goal of the season. 
gets the Blues second half off to a rousing start. Perfect technique on the header from Shea Spitz, leaving Niche and the Rochester Rhinos goal for dead. Well, we had another substitution at halftime. It was George Davis IV who sent that ball in. Pinpoint cross right on the head of Spitz, and he made no mistake. And it all started with the improper connection on the shot from Tanky up top. Fifty-first goal of the season for the LA Blues. Compare that to last year when they struck just 26 times. And for Rochester, who had the best defense in the USL Pro last season, they've now given up 38 goals. So no clean sheet tonight for the Rochester Rhinos. And the LA Blues with only their second real serious attack of the game. What do they do? They score a goal. Rochester looking positive on this response, but that ball would rather play behind. And Spitz, who looks like stepping up a bit higher into midfield. Good tracking back by Chris Cortez. Dutch Jock. Long ball to nowhere. We'll go all the way through to Niche. Rochester Rhinos cashing in on a substitution at halftime as well as Tam McManus is now in for Mayard. What exactly is Cortez doing there? Former Chivas USA man giving the Rochester Rhinos the ball back deep in LA territory. A substitution is Michael Tanky will come out so his season's done. 23-year-old completing his third season with the Rhinos out of the University of Rhode Island. Oh, good turn. Miller did well not to fall for it. And he wins the ball, but the expense of another corner kick. The eighth of the game for the Rochester Rhinos. This time being an in-swinger from the far side. Cleared away with authority. Would look to be off of Shea Spitz last and somehow it's, it's gonna be the LA Blues ball. Miller with the long throw down the line. And the Blues continue to chisel their way down that far side. Corey Miller being told to come back and take the ball from where it went out of bounds, or the throw in rather. Russell checking in with a better option down the line. Well defended. George Davis the fourth running again, looking to combine with Fondy. Well dealt with by Rochester. Shad Momaney stepping in. <laughs> Gonzalez just settling it down for Russell. And Russell once again relieving the pressure with the outlet ball. This one looking for Cortez trying to play it through. Duckett taking almost a second too long. Able to clear it away before Fondi arrives. Oh, that one over the head of O'Leary. But Corey Miller gets there first, and the referee played advantage. 
We'll bring it back for the free kick as Rochester getting ready to make their second substitution. So Blake Brechneider, who had a goal and assist the last time these two teams met, getting set to Leading check in. And replaces J.C. Banks. Banks was a live wire, but his night is done. Brechneider joining this season from the New England Revolution. He's also spent time with D.C. United back in 2011. Enters into the game as well, so plenty of firepower in for the Rochester Rhinos. In terms of the substitutions is McManus and Brett Schneider, but here's Fondy, able to get around his defender, searching for Cortez, just in front of him. Fondy could have took that one in a bit longer and held up before playing it in, just unable to connect though, good ideas. Matthew Fondy showing his pace. Flick on looking for McManus. Blues will have to be keep a watchful eye on him. Be interesting now that he's in, will Earls continue to take the free kicks or will McManus step up just as he did against Pittsburgh in stoppage time? Stellar defending on the far side by the LA Blues. Russell uncharacteristically gives the ball away. Another chance for Rochester, looking to equalize the game here in the 57th minute. Inside for Brett Schneider, but the flag's up. Awesome. Brett Schneider had a goal last night against Phoenix. That one tying the match at two as Phoenix took an early lead with goals in the third and 21st minute. And Earls had an effort in the 32nd. Brett Schneider tying the game in the 58th before McManus had his brace in the 63rd and then stoppage time to complete the comeback win. It looked like the teams were gonna share the points after Phoenix scored in the 90th minute, but then McManus stepped up again. Hoxie wins another corner kick for the Rochester Rhinos. Well, Earls, just like McManus, both played for the Colorado Rapids. Although McManus joined the club last year from Air United in the Scottish Second Division. So that ball played on a rope, rather driven in from Earls and doesn't beat the first defender. Takes an awkward bounce, falls kindly for Earls, off the crossbar, and then the header. And Aaron Perez asking where the flag was. But what a strike from Danny Earls. The crossbar coming to the goalkeeper's rescue. Perez was beaten comprehensively. Dr. Chris Couture is in the official general position for the Los Angeles Blues. Dr. Couture is on staff at Orange County Orthopedics and Sports Medicine in Irvine. For more about Dr. Couture by visiting www.ocsportsmed.com. Cortez trying to spin his way out of traffic, wins the throw in. Shea Spitz creeping up on this near side. In for Fondi, the flick on looking for Cortez who didn't continue his run. And Gonzalez chases it down in midfield. Good ball on the overlap. The referee's gonna let this one go, just the goal kick. Dariush Yazdani off his bench, screaming in his technical area. It was a heavy challenge, but I believe the defender got all ball. So stoppage of play here in the 60th minute with the LA Blues leading one nothing on a 50th minute goal from Shea Spitz. Back on his big tour, 
It was Corey Miller who made the overlapping run who went down under that challenge. Fair challenge, though. That one, Alejandro Mariscal has gotten right. He's missed penalty shots at both ends, but this time the referee's spot on. As Mirshad Momini goes down under minimal contact from Hoxie. The LA Blues electing to put their midfield and forwards up rather than play it quickly. And it leaves that gap that Rochester could attack had they won that ball cleanly. So once that midfield line joined that forward line, there was 40 yards of space in between the Blues front six and the back the four. Instead, it's just going to be a throw in as the substitutions down. begin Fans raining down here. And I'm just about to throw Over my papers away. We will get it all sorted out, though. I'm on the far side, and nobody's telling me who's coming in and out, so I apologize for the inconvenience. We will get it right as the game goes on, though. It's Kiri Hasis with the clearance. Another good early ball pumped in. Falls for Momaney. Can't pick out the far corner. Still searching for his first goal since late April. Just didn't make proper contact in the end. He can shoot from distance though, Momaney. That one just inside the 18, but the majority of his goals over the last few years for the LA Blues have come from well outside the box. So now Momaney switching links with George Davis the fourth, just to give a little bit of a different look. Have George Davis the fourth go after Lucas Fernandez. 25-year-old Argentine who joined the Rochester Liners last year from Club Progreso in the second division in Uruguay. Good passing along the front line. Flag stays down. No, it doesn't. George Davis is offside. And the flag is up. Fans don't agree. It looked like Davis had held his run just enough. The referee's assistant on the far side has a better view. Getting back to Lucas Fernandez, though, he's actually played in the 2011 Copa Libertadores with Bolivian side Jorge Wilstermann. For those of you who don't know, the Copa Libertadores is South America's equivalent of Europe's UEFA Champions League. So great experience for Lucas Fernandez to bring to this Rochester Rhino squad. Just his 11th game, though, in his second season with the club. And has really stayed at home, Lucas Fernandez has barely gotten forward down this right-hand side from his outside back position. Spitz. George Davis the fourth applauds the effort, but he never made the run into the channel. One nothing in the 63rd minute here on USL Nation via Liquid Event TV. Mark Serber with you at the Cal State Fullerton Titan Stadium. Hope you're enjoying our coverage wherever you may be. And a special welcome to those of you staying up late tonight in Rochester. Oh, that's a good ball flicked on. Now Fernandez venturing forward. That ball rather hanging in the air for just a second, allowing the Blues to get back. Cortez. Good double team defending. This one forward, it's a foot race for Fondi. And that ball always angling away from him and Duckett able to get it back to his keeper. Kyriasis, 33 year old Greek, gets it over to his center back partner. George Davis the fourth unable to cut it out. Brett Schneider looking for the long ball. Some of the Blues defenders had their hands up, but Dutch Jock kept him on side. That's a tremendous sliding tackle by Corey Miller. Little nudge in the back, enough for the referee to call a foul.
And once again, Fondi trying to sneak in behind the defense, but this time Duckett's wise to it. Kyriasis. Has played in the Greek Superliga and Italy Serie B. But that's a poor giveaway from Rochester and Fani off to the races. Oh, he had Shea Spitz on the inside channel. Instead, tried to play it across to Cortez. Don't think Fani picked out the right ball on that occasion. Good outlet to Lucas Fernandez. Much more adventurous in the second half. Kiriazis. Earls. Rhino's MVP for the 2013 season. And he's stepping inside a lot more, which is allowing Fernandez to be able to take that outside route, as that was a good ball looking forward. The offside flag stayed down, but Perez quickly off his line. Oh, and good tracking back, a bad giveaway. Perez was off his line. Rosalind thought about it. Danny Earls. Pinpoint switch. And the overlap is on. Miller beaten for speed to the back post. And Shea Spitz doing the job with his head at both ends. This time clearing it away before McManus could get there as he was on the prowl at the back post. Ninth corner kick of the game now for the Rochester Rhinos. Have to feel the more and more they get these set pieces, one of them will come to fruition. Because there's a chance from the top of the box. What a strike. And it's game on here at Titan Stadium. Rochester Rhinos on the board. Leveling the score at 1 1. Believe it was Rosenlund. It was a spectacular volley. Absolutely nothing Perez could do. Well, you can't blame the LA Blues. They tried to get out quickly, tried to stop that second ball. But nobody standing in that space to make sure that that second ball comes out to the top of the box. Rosalind all alone still had plenty to do, though. And we've said this here many times at Titan Stadium this season. That's a contender for USL Pro Goal of the Week. Brett Schneider gets inside of Shea Spitz. Leaves it off for Earls. Fernandez. Good adjustments made at halftime by second year head coach Jesse Myers. Earls with a more inside roll. This time playing it right to Corey Miller. Flick on looking for Fondi. Him and Cortez sharing 18 goals between them. Oh, nifty from Cortez to create some space for himself. Still going Cortez, fighting his way off the double team. Gonzalez wins it back. Cortez has stepped in front of. Brett Schneider. Ball searching for Brett Schneider, cut out by Shea Spitz. Gonzalez is playing much deeper now in the second half, Gonzalez. As Momani was looking to attack the heart of the Rhinos defense, but plenty of players back. Brett Schneider leaves it off for Earls. Kiriazis. The veteran pushes it forward for Brett Schneider. A little touch off for Earls. And this time, Tam McManus is offside. 32-year-old Scotsman who made his name with Hibs in the Scottish Premier League. Over 100 appearances for the club that Alan Russell has also played for. Yeah. 
1-1 in the 70th minute of play. Shea Spitz for the LA Blues and Rosenland for the Rochester Rhinos. Niche beating Fani to the ball. O'Leary, missed touch from him. And that ball and looking for McFadden. Perez quickly off his line. Fondi. Good target play, getting it back to Spitz. Cortez looking for that entry ball. Kyriasis. Oh, by Danny Earls coming inside, it's allowed Rosenland to play further forward. Brett Schneider also coming into the midfield to create an extra player there. Fondi has to drop back to help out. Can lead the break though. George Davis the fourth rather popped it up and Fondi has to settle it down. Russell sprays it out wide. Spitz can't get there in time. Inside the final 20 minutes of the 2013 USL Pro regular season. Rochester looking to end the season on a three game winning streak while the LA Blues looking to get up to sixth in the table to improve their seating before heading into the quarterfinals. Chris Cortez's night is done in the 72nd minute. Coming in is Mohamed Rakinpour. 20 year old former Iranian youth international. Interesting story about him came over because he wanted to play for the LA Galaxy. And when he didn't make it in their youth academy, played here and then played at Canyon College before being signed by the LA Blues and is now making his third appearance of the season. Already has an assist against Santiga Barracuda. Can he make his case here against one of the most famous teams in the USL Pro? Gonzalez gets it out wide. This ball screaming for a cross hit too hard. The idea is there. Another substitution for the LA Blues. Dariush Yastani mixing it up here in the 73rd minute. And Mershad Momani's night is done. Checking is midfield general Nelson Pizarro. Back on the field and back in the 18 for his first game since the July 21st two to one loss against Charlotte. Was out with a hamstring injury and then at the coach's discretion for a few games as well. Can he make a case for himself heading into the playoffs, especially with the fact that they're expecting Rodrigo Lopez to be ready come playoff time. When the season started, it was a triangle in the middle of Rodrigo Lopez, Nelson Pizarro, and Alan Russell playing just behind them. But that was before Darius Yazdani came in after the coaching change made midway through the season for Jesus Rico Sanz. So that's a definite foul. It'll be a free kick for the Rhinos. Chance to get more players forward. My apologies, it's Patter Coley's the coach of the Rochester Rhinos. Happy birthday, Charisma. At the winning number in the 50-50 raffle here. The winning number is 135. 
So this time the offside flag is up in the 75th minute. Congratulations on the 50-50 raffle. You've won number 135-837. Again, 135-837. Claim your prize at the LA Blues Band booth. Thank you. Gonzalez wins it back for the Blues. George Davis the fourth able to keep it in bounds and cleared away. Brett Schneider can't get by Shea Spitz. Played behind Rokin Poor. It'll be a thrown for the Rochesteranos on the far side. Offside flag up against McManus. Lovely layoff. In vain, though, as the offside flag is up with the assistant referee on this near side. Things have slowed down just a bit here in the 76th minute. Their rousing opening to the second half. Shea Spitz scoring for the LA Blues. And then Tyler Rosenland with a spectacular volley to level the scores at one. So that's a handball on Fondi, and this time the referee does call it. Fondi will get a talking to. Nothing more from the referee, Alejandro Mariscal. Nisha's free kick. George Davis, the fourth offside once again, tried to hold his run. A play goes on as the ball went all the way to Nisha and Rochester kept possession. Brett Schneider. Oh, that's a good ball through. Perez has to come out. Smarley plays it with his feet. If you don't know whether you have time or not to let that roll in or the attacker's gonna catch up to it, safety first, and that's what Perez did. The LA Blues squandering possession in midfield once again here on USL Nation. Match being produced tonight by Liquid Event TV. Reminder to like us on USL Nation, at UNation on Twitter, and at Liquid Event TV on Twitter as well. Of course, like USL Pro on Facebook and at Liquid Event TV on Facebook as well. Rosalind, the goal scorer, brings it down to midfield. Will hit the reset button with his goalkeeper niche. Brett Schneider wins the first header, but Dutch Jock to the second ball. And Shea Spitz not only does a great job to keep it in, but to play it with a purpose to Nelson Pizarro. Fondi showing his strength and vision as well. Little touch through for George Davis the fourth. Off to the far side for Rokinpour. Rokinpour, he can hit him. Not on target though. Nish will play it short to Fernandez. The Argentine has space to work, instead holds it up. Putting Kariasis in an awkward situation, but he deals with it well. Spitz win the first ball, and George Davis the fourth is bundled over by Tam McManus. Dutch Jock. Flag stays down and Fani brings it down on his chest for Gonzalez who scored from there before. But this time puts his effort tamely at Niche. Tonight's match is brought to you by the Dr. Pepper, Snapple Fruit, and Southern California Motorcycle. Hey, 
Fernandez once again. Uh, it looks like Fernandez might have pulled something as he went down or at least cramping up. And you hope that it's just the cramp and the way he's stretching, that's what I think it is. As a reminder, this is the Rochester Rhino's second game in less than 24 hours. And this morning their flight was delayed and then canceled, had to get on another flight and arrived at LAX, which is a good 37 or so miles away from Titan Stadium, about two hours before the game. So Lucas Fernandez receiving treatment. I think it's a welcome rest for this Rochester Rhino squad. Aaron Perez continues to try and motivate his squad. If you're hearing loud booms in the background, that's actually the fireworks coming from Disneyland. So some stoppage time will be added to the end of this match as we're inside the final 10 minutes. 1-1 one, one between the Rochester Rhinos and the LA Blues. Mark Serba with the call on USL Nation. And the trainer signaling that Lucas Fernandez is going to need a substitution. So Fernandez's night is done in the 81st minute. And the question is that the player that came in, was he coming in for Fernandez? I think he is, as nobody else is coming off. And it's another forward coming on, so why not go for broke if you're the Rochester Rhinos? Leary has time. Oh, that's a dangerous header, giving it right back to Rochester. Quick ball in from Breschneider. And quickly off his line is Perez. Good distribution as well. McFadden chasing. And Gonzalez able to keep it in on the far side. Oh, and a heavy touch. Otherwise, Fondi was in if they could have pulled it back. Brett Schneider dispossessed. Shea Spitz going forward. Tries to muscle off Brett Schneider, but instead, it's gonna be a free kick for the LA Blues. Great work once again from Shea Spitz. Nish calling for a three-man wall for the Rochester Rhinos. We are in the 83rd minute. The last time these two teams met, both teams scored inside the final 10 minutes. The yellow card has been issued to somebody, and it's a red card has come out as well. And the question is to who? So Alejandro Mariscal is issued a second yellow and then a red card. And we'll get who's walking off for you in a second. Red card given to Rhino, number 11. Well, it's given to Brent Schneider, the substitute. So Brent Schneider's off. And I saw a yellow card come out and then a red card. So he must have said something. Either way, the Rhinos are down to 10 men. So perhaps the first yellow is maybe for the foul for stopping the counterattack, but I didn't see the referee give it to him. Then all of a sudden, he flashed another yellow and a red at the wall. And Brett Schneider's walking off toward the showers. Is that the impetus the LA Blues need to go on and win this game now? Is Rokin Poor who can hit them? Likes to take these Brazilian style. If it clears the wall, it could be trouble for Niche. Instead, it's low and driven. 
but it falls kindly for Spitz. That's a good ball across. Headed out right to Rokinpour. 20 year old, works his way into the box, puts it to the far post. Not sure whether he was trying to play that across goal or try to pick out the far corner himself. If he had pulled that back just a bit, Fondi would have been able to get on the end of it. But in the end, just the wrong angle on that ball and it'll be a goal kick for Niche as we head into the final five minutes of normal time. So after an explosive start to this second half and a bit of a lull midway through, looks like we're in for a good final five minutes here at Titan Stadium. Corey Miller too tactile for the referee's liking. And now it's the Rochester Rhinos turn to see if they can work a free kick. They've already scored from a set piece. Off the second ball to be fair. Earls to play it in. McFadden's up, rather heads it backwards. Gonzalez, Pizarro. His pass smartly led by Danny Earls to quell the counter attack, at least calm it down just a bit. It's the long ball seeking out Gabriel Gonzalez on the far side. Gonzalez picks his man's pocket. Gonzalez is in, waiting for the run of Fondi. Rather try to pull it back to Rokinpour, but it was well defended. And Rochester can breathe again. Dutch Jock with the header away. Ball inside for McManus. Try to flick it on for McFadden. Oh, and a poor ball from Aaron Perez. Right to McManus. Can he repeat his late game heroics for the third game in a row? Puts his effort right into the arms of Perez, who spared the blushes by the misdirection in that hit from the Scotsman. Well, what a shame that would have been. Miller looks to be laboring a bit, but that's a beautiful ball into Fondi. Just beyond him, but Fondi chases it down. Has been taken out wide, though. Defender squares up to him, and Fondi waits for the support. Has it in the guise of Shea Spitz. Pizarro with some room to operate. He tried to pick out the corner, but a bit ambitious, to say the least. And just another goal kick for Niche in the 88th minute. So we've had one injury, a red card, and a plethora of substitutions. My guess is three minutes of stoppage time. We still have two and a half minutes of normal time, though. 1-1 one, one between the LA Blues and the Rochester Rhinos. Throwing for the Blues in the 89th minute of play. And the offside flag is up, much to the chagrin of the fans in the stands. You can hear what they think of that. Just want to let you know that after the final whistle, stay with us here at USL Nation and Liquid Event TV as I'll be going down on the field and get some player reactions. Kirsten Nish taking his time. A point would not be a bad result for the Rochester Rhinos. Four points in less than 24 hours would be pretty good. But Rochester pushing for the winner. Reedy wins the throne for the Rhinos. Final 30 seconds of normal time in the 2013 USL Pro regular season. 
can either side find a late winner. Rochester has a knack of scoring them, and the LA Blues have a knack of giving them up. And they give up another corner kick, the 10th corner kick of the game in the 90th minute. Oh, the ball doesn't clear the first defender. And the Blues get their first. Blues on the counter attack. Kent Spitz make the break count. Beautiful ball through for Fadi. Fadi around Nish. Fadi scores! 90th minute winner for the LA Blues. Sixth place it is. Shea Spitz turning provider with a gorgeous ball knifing through the heart of the Rochester Rhinos defense. And Fadi with his 10th goal of the season may very well have given the Blues all three points here at Titan Stadium and their first ever win over the Rochester Rhinos. Still with this Rochester team, you wait to the very final whistle. But the patience of Matt Fondi to wait for Nish to go down and then round the keeper and putting enough pace on that ball to slide it into the net with Rochester players pouring back to try and clear it off the line. And the Blues still have it all to do defensively, but they have the two to one lead. Spitz, Fondi, Pizarro. Going backwards with it, they just need to get the ball into the corner as we are now deep into stoppage time here at Titan Stadium. Spitz plays it through this time for George Davis IV. Can't get around Kyriasis. Great shielding from the Greek. McManus. Can he repeat his late game heroics? That's a beautiful ball through. And Corey Miller's there. Oh, the LA Blues turning the table. Finally, they're the team scoring in stoppage time. Now the Blues just trying to get it forward. Onside. And it was Russell trying to lob Niche, but over in the end. Good job by George Davis IV to leave that off as he was offside, but Alan Russell running through wasn't. LA Blues just trying to kill off the clock. That's a great sliding tackle. Well won by Russell, and anywhere will do at the moment. And how that goal wouldn't just be a dagger to the Rochester Rhinos, but also to the Dayton Dutch Lions and the Pittsburgh Riverhounds, who the LA Blues would leapfrog in the table. Alejandro Mariscal's whistle goes, and the LA Blues, with a goal from Matt Fondi in stoppage time, have beaten the Rochester Rhinos for the first time in their history, and in the process, leapfrog Dayton and Pittsburgh from eighth place into sixth. And the LA Blues can now book their tickets to South Carolina where they will face the reigning champions, the Charleston Battery, in the quarterfinals. After a pretty tame first half, it was Shea Spitz who got things underway. Beautiful counterattack, the cross coming in from George Davis IV right onto the head of Spitz. And he made no mistake putting it back across Nisha's goal and into the far corner. Rosenlin would then equalize off a stellar volley as one of the 10 corner kicks played in tonight for the Rochester Rhinos was cleared right out to Rosenlin. He let it bounce and smashed it beyond Aaron Perez. But then, in stoppage time, the break was on for the LA Blues. Shea Spitz running right down the center of the Rochester Rhinos defense, slipped it through for Matt Fondi, and he rounded Niche to put home his 10th goal of the season and give the LA Blues all three points and I don't think you could ask for a better ending to the 2013 USL Pro regular season.
Well, that will do it up here for me in the booth, but stay with us here on USL Nation, courtesy of Liquid Event TV, as I'm gonna go down and try and get player and coaches' reactions from both teams. Once again, it finishes the LA Blues 2 and the Rochester Rhinos 1. Stay with us here on USL Nation. Here with Dutch Jock. First of all, congratulations on the win. 90th minute. You guys have to be so happy with the outcome. Yeah, we had to pull through. You know, we started we started slow. Uh, we got it together, and we pulled that last goal, which uh, is, it was a great feeling on defense. We can we can relax a little bit. Now, ten corners. How did you guys have to defend this Rochester Rhinos team, who was pretty strong in the air? Yeah, they, they came in hard. Every uh, set piece was dangerous, and uh, we just had to keep our heads up and uh, stay focused, which which we did. How does this three points affect you guys going into Charleston? Uh, it gets us higher in the standings, and uh, you know, yeah, it, it's just momentum. Uh, we, we get a win, we go in with a win, and we just play to, to win and move on through. Well, thank you so much for your time, and good luck, and have a safe trip to South Carolina. Thank you very much. Here with George Davis the fourth, and you provided a real spark off the bench early on on the counterattack, pinpoint cross. What were your instructions given to you before you came on at halftime? Uh, just be ready, you know, come in and bring something to the game. Uh, like you said, bring intensity. Uh, we were a little sluggish to start out, but uh, I think we made a few adjustments and we came out strong and, and finished them like we were supposed to. Two goals on counterattacks. Of course, your involvement in that first goal. Take us through it. Uh, well, like you said, we was a counterattack. We had numbers up. Uh, I just opened up. I knew that, you know, if I opened up out wide, somebody would give me the ball. Once I received it, I just took a touch, saw Shea making a back post run, and I tried to put it on his head. You've played Charleston twice, lost 3 nothing in South Carolina, beat them 2 to 1 here. What do you have to do this time around to beat Charleston, especially on their own turf? Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough going into Charleston, but we beat them before. Like you said, we can do it again. We just have to stay disciplined, uh, stay tight at the back, and then take our take our opportunities. Uh, fondy has been doing really well. Um, the last game we won, he took his opportunities. So if we can keep that spark and then add the improvements, uh, 
you know, moving forward, we'll be all right. All right, and what from this game do you take away from those three points at the last minute when what do you need to work on before you take that flight to South Carolina? Uh, we just got to make, make sure we're sharp from the start. Uh, Charleston's a good enough team that if we're not sharp for 90 minutes, they're going to punish us. And that's what happened when we played them the first time. So we just got to make sure we come out strong, um, be the aggressor, and, and, and take, take the win. Well, George Davis the fourth with the assist on the opening goal. So the LA Blues win 2-1, to one, and they will now go to the quarterfinals and try and dethrone the reigning champions. George Davis the fourth, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. All the best to you. here with Alan Russell. As the captain of this team, what does it mean to you to see your team play all the way through the 90 minutes and come away with the winner in stoppage time? It, it means everything. Um, it shows that we have the character to grind out results. I mean, you watch teams like Manchester United, Bayern Munich, Liverpool. It's not always pretty. Sometimes they need to keep working, believing in themselves and in the last five minutes, nick a goal and get the three points. And that's exactly what we've done tonight. It wasn't the prettiest of performances, but it's three points and uh, lets us finish the season on 40 points and, and finish in sixth. Well, with Rodrigo Lopez out, did you have to take on more responsibility tonight? Um, Rodrigo's a big miss. He's, he's one of the players who'll take the ball, take the ball anywhere. And as you know, me and him work really well together. So, yeah, I mean, any team would, all, would, would miss a, a player like Rodrigo. Looks like you almost had a goal to clinch this match in stoppage time coming over. Trying to lob a six foot five keeper, and you almost did it. Take us through that. Yeah, um, just at the end, I still had a bit of energy, and, and Fondi, as usual, held the ball up um, really well. So I just made the, ro the run beyond. Darush was telling me to get forward, get forward. So I seen the opportunity, and I don't know, my, a little bit more practice in my striker days might have come back to me. I might have, I might have got a goal, but. That's it. Um, we could have made it 3-1, but I'm happy with the three points. A bit interesting that when you're holding on to a 2-1 to lead against a team that has just scored two stoppage time goals to take six points in their last games, yeah. that Darius Yazdani is telling you to go forward. Yeah, that's that's just the belief that he has in us. I mean, he doesn't. he's not happy with um, just winning with a goal. He wants us to go and impose ourselves on the teams and, and get as many goals as we can. Well, 52 goals this year. Yeah. versus 26 last year. Other than obviously Fondi, what's been the difference? Um, I think we attack, we attack in, no, in numbers more. Last season it was basically down to one or two people trying to get the goals. This season Fondi's got double figures, which is incredible. Um, Chris Cortez is one away from double figures. George has got six or seven, Shea's got a few. I mean, it's the whole team's chipping in with goals and it's, and it's shown because we've doubled or tally from last season, which is a, an incredible feat, to be honest. And the last question for the captain, Alan Russell, here is what do you guys have to do to dethrone the reigning champions in the quarterfinals? We have to go there and we have to set our stall out and stick to our plan. And we've beat them before, so we can we can go and beat them again. It's a tough, it's one of the tougher playoff um, places to go to. They've got a decent home record, but um, believe me, no one wants to play us. It is a bit of a Scottish reunion out there tonight. Did you know Tam McManus from your days in the SPL? Me and, me and Tam are like best friends from when we were 16. We came through the youth system at Hibernian together. Stayed in the same room in the same hotel for two years. So we were um, we were really, really close. Um, we still keep in contact, not as much as we would like. But yeah, Tam, Tam's one of my my good friends from my younger days in, in the SPL. Were you aware that he had struck 90-plus uh, minute goals in the last two games? Was it Tam that scored? I wasn't aware that it was Tam that had scored them. He's honestly, he's one of the best finishers I've, I've had the, the pleasure of playing with, and he's a he's a truly good player. Well, Captain Alan Russell, we said final question, like three questions ago. Thank you for staying with us and have a safe trip to South Carolina. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, buddy. Thank have you. a good night. Bye bye.
I'm here with goalkeeper Aaron Perez. First of all, congratulations on the victory. Thank you. This game could have been very, very different had you not made that save off that point-blank <laughs> diving header in the first half. Take us through that. Man, you know, we, we actually trained that really hard this week. Uh, Mohammed, Carl, and I, um, we trained a lot on reactions this week. And, you know, that's just, you know, getting your eyes around as a goalkeeper, getting your eyes around, seeing where the threat's coming from, and then just reacting. You know, sometimes you just throw, throw a limb out there and, you know, just, just kind of hope for the best. Had to deal with 10 corners tonight. How do you think the boys did? You know, we did really well. We did really well. Um, you know, they, they had a couple outswingers on the first one. Um, you know, we practiced during the week. Uh, coach is real good about going through, when we go through walkthrough, positioning who, who gets who, you know, where we should be, depending on where they, uh, they strike the ball from, in swing or out swing. Um, and, and, you know, the one they scored on, you know, I, I definitely think I probably should have come out and got a hand. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a team goal we gave up. And, you know, thankfully we got the three after. Well, it was an absolute fizzing volley. So not much you can say about that. <laughs> it was a good shot. Now, to bring in something different with you is that, and obviously you've probably been asked this a million times, but you were a punter in college, mm -hmm. played in the NFL. How did you make the transition to a goalkeeper in professional soccer? Oh, you know what? Um, I think w what you realize is what I'm learning in my, my mid-20s is you just got to follow your heart. You know, you got to do what makes you happy. And, uh, you know, I actually just started playing locally again with a men's uh, 30s and over team in Santa Monica. And, you know, kind of just the way life works, God works, ho however you want to call it. You know, one thing led to another. And, uh Started playing with an amateur team with DOXA and then played NPSL, PDL, NPSL, and then, you know, got the chance to come here and show what I could do. And, you know, I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job so far. Well, thank you so much for your time and good luck against the reigning champions in the quarterfinals. I appreciate it, man. We're going we're gonna to go on tough. So the L.A. Blues leave it late, as they often do, take all three points in dramatic fashion as Matt Fondy took a pass from Shea Spitz, rounded goalkeeper Christian Nish, and scored in stoppage time to put the Blues up 2-1 to one and catapult them from eighth in the table to sixth. Next up for the L.A. Blues, they travel to South Carolina to take on the reigning champions, the Charleston Battery, in the quarterfinals of the USL Pro 2013 playoffs. But for now, I'd like to say that it has been an honor and a pleasure to call the LA Blues this year. Thank you so much to USL Nation and to Liquid Event TV. A reminder to follow them at UNation and at Liquid Event TV on Twitter. Signing off for the final time in 2013 from Titan Stadium, my name is Mark Serber saying good night, where the LA Blues have won 2-1 to one over the Rochester Rhinos.